past few weeks, we've been talking about the invisibles. We've been talking about how basically there are people in this world that we'd just rather ignore. And we forget that we have a whole lot in common with these people because the truth is we've all felt invisible or, or we'll, we all will feel invisible at some point in our life. And this has been a huge deal in my life personally because, I mean, God has used these principles I mean, earlier in my life to just convict me and restore my heart back to His when it comes to these invisibles. But it all started with the idea that I, I've felt this way too. I've felt like no one sees me. You know, like I told you in a story uh, earlier in this series, in middle school I felt invisible and then I got into high school and I kind of found my niche and I kind of flipped and decided that I would rather ignore people kind of stuff. But my first two years in high school, I was still trying, trying to make that transition and I was trying to find my place kind of in our school and, and in our community with, with who I was and that was by playing guitar and, and that's just how that worked for me and so I became, I was trying to be, you know, make myself fit somewhere and it was working except for I didn't have any friends and so um, I'll never forget it, it was towards the uh, beginning of my sophomore year there was a new kid in my Latin 2 class and he came up to me and he started talking to me about music this and music that and we kind of hit it off and we liked the same music kind of stuff and I had a friend I was really excited and he invited me, he played guitar also, he invited me to, to hang out and play guitar um, and play with some musicians that he knew at his church. And I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't a church person. Uh, and there was no secret about that. I was very adamantly not a Christian. And he still invited me and I still went because I had that need for friendship. Now it seems kind of silly that to do something that I just love to do, like play guitar, at a place where I really didn't want to do it, like church, was that big of a deal in my life. But it really was. I mean, the truth is we all feel like we have needs in our lives that need to be met. And if you feel invisible, that need is just amplified. Now the problem is most of us have this desire or need that we feel and we go and we get it met and we have to get it met over and over and over again. But the truth is most of the time the need that we feel isn't the end of the story. Now in the book of John, there's an incredible story about this. And the story is so incredible because if we let it, it will set the whole tone for our lives. Check this out. When the Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? So the fact that she's a Samaritan is a big deal. You see, in that culture, the Jews hated the Samaritans. They were the invisibles. They wouldn't even walk through their town. So this girl, she acknowledges this. You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again but whoever drinks the water that I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So did you see that? Jesus says, hey, I know you feel like you have a need and you do, but your need goes way past the physical need that you think that you have. See, Jesus says you need an encounter with me. And so she gets this encounter. And, and Jesus goes on to say, hey, I know everything that you've done. He, he names her sin, basically. And, and she kind of feels uh, put off. But Jesus gives grace. And he says, go tell everyone you know about this encounter. Right? And so she, Scripture says, leaves the jar of water there and runs to town to go tell all of her friends. So the first time I went to church, kind of on my own accord, it was to play guitar. But just like my, my friend knew, 
I needed something way deeper than that. And so after a few times of coming back to church, I had an encounter with Jesus. And something in me changed and everything around me changed. And so just like that woman with the water, I felt like I needed friendship or belonging and all these things. Really, I just needed an encounter with Jesus. And after that, I mean, I could have left my jug at the well. See, Jesus sees through our visible needs to, to see what we really need. And as believers, we get to partner with the Holy Spirit that's in us to, to show people that they need Him. But the way that that happens usually is just by addressing a physical need. See, we have to find the invisibles or be on the lookout for the people who feel invisible around us. We need to address their physical needs. And even if we never see what kind of grace or love that they need from Jesus, even if we never get to experience them getting that, we can trust that Jesus is with us and Jesus sees through all the physical stuff to the internal need for Him that they really have.